incredibly fortunate always to do work I've really loved. Sometimes it's paid really well and sometimes it's paid really horribly, horribly. But I've always done work that I loved and I have found in the work that I've done incredible self-fulfillment and I've, you know, I know from many of my employees that they have had the same experience. I would like everybody to have that same experience. But if we're going to build and support a society that creates work, that fills people with joy and growth and a sense of community, we are going to need all hands on deck. We are going to need educators, we're going to need philosophers, academics, scientists, technologists, public policy thinkers. We're going to need all, you know, parents, we're going to need kids. We need everybody to focus on what is it we want the future of work to look like for everyone so that anybody you stop in the street will say the same as I've had, you know, the same thing that I've said, which is I love my work. The first thing that really concerns me is our schools are completely unprepared for the future of work as it is going to be for our kids and our grandkids. They're teaching old-fashioned curricula, old-fashioned skills in old-fashioned ways. This is not going to be solved by just handing everybody out iPads. We need to be teaching different things in different ways with different relationships between teachers and students and parents. That I think is the number one issue. I think the number two issue is for organizations. With this new technology and these new kinds of intelligence, what is the role of humans and therefore what is the job of leadership? Everything about leadership is changing now. Um, many leaders just keep hankering for a return to the good old days of the early noughties. A few that I see are radically questioning everything they do and the way that they do it. And I think we need collectively to think hard about the relationship between leaders and employees and companies and the society that those companies serve. And I think the third thing then is what is the role for public policy in all of this? How much of this do we want to develop organically, driven by market forces? Are there specific issues, constituencies, values, standards that we will need public policy to protect? I think technology is the most obvious force that's changing this. I think inequality is another huge driver of questioning and self-questioning. If our public policy and our companies and our education system have collectively created such extreme gaps between the most wealthy and the most poor, we have to look at those three sources to see what they can do to redress that if we're going to see any kind of social fabric maintained. Well, we're clearly going to need a radically different kind of education system. And somebody's going to have to de design that. Now again, we can leave that to market forces and just hope that if a thousand flowers bloom, a few of them are functional. Or we can try to design what that diversity looks like. I think in terms of companies, I think we have to think hard about things, issues like employment rights what kind of employment rights people should have, how people get paid, how the wealth of this new technology is going to get distributed. And in terms of public policy and lawmaking, it's very clear that all of these new technologies raise huge issues, not just around privacy, but about the ownership of intellectual property, the sharing of abundance, um, and kind of what constitutes work and who pays for it if it's being done by a non-human. I mean, it's interesting because when people talk about diversity, you know, and especially when I talk about diversity, people think, oh, you mean women, you know, it's code for women. And it's not true, actually. I think it's really important that kids are part of this debate. I think the whole relationship between kids and, and teachers 
is up for re-examination. I think we need to talk to the young and the old. I think we need to talk to the professional and the craftsman. I think we need to talk to you know, everybody who is touched by the world of work, both those who serve and those who are served, because all of us depend for our lifestyles, for our living, on the contribution of everybody around us. You know, if you turn the tap and the water runs, somebody made that happen, and we depend on those people. And the more visible and the more realized those relationships are, the more creativity grows out of those connections. My daughter started university this week and she wrote me a letter and she said, it's the first time in my life where when people told me I was creative, they didn't mean weird. I would like everybody to have an experience where being creative wasn't considered weird and I would dearly like them not to have to wait till university to have that experience. Mm -hmm.